Hello everyone. Today's video is about randomized response in survey research. Survey research plays a critical role in various fields, from public health to market research. Accurate data collection is essential for making informed decisions and drawing reliable conclusions. However, some survey questions may be sensitive, leading respondents to provide inaccurate or even untruthful answers. In simple terms, they might prompt them to lie. To address this issue, randomized response techniques have been developed and applied, allowing researchers to gather sensitive information without compromising respondent privacy or truthfulness. The concept of randomized response. Randomized response is a statistical technique used to collect sensitive information indirectly. It was introduced by Warner in 1965 and has since become a valuable tool in survey research. The core idea behind randomized response is to introduce randomness into the respondent's answer, making it challenging to determine whether they are answering truthfully or not, thus providing them plausible deniability. How does it work? The basic idea. In a typical randomized response scenario, respondents are asked a sensitive yes or no question, a binary question, as for example, have you ever used illegal drugs? Instead of answering directly, respondents are asked to flip a coin in private. If the coin comes up heads, they answer truthfully. If it comes up tails, respondents flip the coin again and answer yes if it lands heads and no if it lands tails. In reality, you would flip the coin twice in both scenarios. So even if you would have flipped it heads on the first try, so you actually know you have to answer truthfully, you would flip it again so that no one actually knows who, was, who would watch you that the first um, answer or the first flip was heads. So in that case, uh, if the coin flip, the first coin flip came up heads, um, the second coin flip is just simply ignored. We have several randomization devices. Various randomization devices can be used such as coins, dice, uh, specially designed cards and spinners. The choice is made in private, ensuring that only the respondent knows whether they are providing the truthful answer or a randomized one. Also, as can be seen in the spinner example, the randomization doesn't always have to be 50%. Visualized here is a possibility of 75% of answering truthfully and only a 25% chance to randomize the response. The data collection works by collecting the randomized responses and because of the randomization process, uh, researchers cannot discern whether a particular respondent provided a sensitive answer or not. This anonymity encourages respondents to answer more truthfully as they know their privacy is preserved. If we use a fair coin, meaning heads is as likely as tails, each 50%, so each answer now has a 75% chance of being correct. Uh, I can show this without using any math at all. Without loss of generality, let's assume the true answer to a question is yes. First assume the coin lands heads. We now answer truthfully, but to conceal the fact that the coin came up heads, we flip it again. This, this is what I mentioned before, that's a so-called dummy throw. No matter how it lands, we answer truthfully, yes. If the initial coin flip lands tails, we also flip the coin again. This time, if it lands heads, we answer yes, no matter what the true answer is. And if it lands tails, we answer no. You can quickly count the amount of yes answers and you see that three out of the four outcomes is the actual true answer. And three quarters are 75%. That means respondents can still claim with 25% that their answer was not actually yes, which leaves them, again, plausible deniability. There are several advantages and disadvantages or challenges to randomized response. First, an advantage, or three advantages rather, the first one is increased truthfulness. The primary advantage of randomized response is that it encourages respondents to provide more truthful answers to sensitive questions. Since the true responses are masked by randomness, they are more likely to answer honestly. Privacy protection. A randomized response ensures respondent privacy. Even if someone were to access the survey da data, they wouldn't be able to link specific answers to individual respondents. Finally, statistical analysis. Randomized response data can be statistically analyzed to estimate the prevalence of sensitive behaviors or characteristics within a population. Various estimation methods, such as the Warner estimator, are available for this purpose. Next, some challenges. First, the randomization device choice. The choice of the device should be carefully considered to ensure true randomness and to avoid potential biases. And sample size, uh, you need adequate sample sizes because if you, if you think about it, if you only have four people 
and you only have a 75% certainty of the answers actually being correct, you're pretty lost. So you need to have adequate sample sizes to make reliable estimations. Third assumption of randomness, randomized response, assumes that respondents truly randomize their answers. In practice, some respondents may still provide the true responses, introducing a level of uncertainty. Finally, ethical concerns. Ethical considerations surrounding the use of randomized response should be taken into account, as some respondents may feel uncomfortable with the randomization process. In fact, studies have shown that some respondents feel as they are lying if they, their answer is now untrue due to the randomized response technique. Finally, some applications of randomized response. Randomized response is commonly used in surveys related to sensitive topics such as substance abuse, criminal behavior, sexual preferences, tax evasion or discrimination. Moreover, randomized response is used in local differential privacy. Since randomized response only works for binary choices, such as yes and no, more sophisticated approaches such as rapport are used for non-binary variables. I will certainly make a video on rapport in the near future. To conclude, randomized response is a valuable technique in survey research for collecting sensitive information, while preserving respondent privacy and encouraging truthful responses. Researchers should carefully consider its application in their studies, taking into account the specific context, ethical concerns and the choice of randomization device. When used appropriately, randomized response can enhance the quality and reliability of survey data, allowing for more accurate insights into sensitive behaviors and characteristics within populations. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next.